Fine then, it's time to see question number 10. And this has been brought from the topic electromagnetic induction, where the examiner basically wants to see the idea of mutual inductance and self-inductance. So for those who memorize the expression for them, it's a straightforward. And for those who try to derive it, it's not long either. Within one or two steps, you can solve it. But by the way, what is the question? Let's try to see. So it says that there are two long coaxial solenoids of same length. The inner and the outer coils have radii R1 and R2 and number of turns per unit length N1 and N2 respectively. We need to calculate the ratio of mutual inductance to self-inductance of the inner coil. So we need to calculate it. It comes out to be very, very straightforward and I remember the formula, so why not to use the advantage of that? The mutual inductance between these two, it's going to be mu naught N1, N2, pi, R1 square L. Or you can do in this way, it just takes one step that you pass the current to the outer solenoid and calculate the flux through the inner one. So that phi by current is going to be the mutual. It would be easier for you if you consider primary to be the outer coil. Pass the current to the outer, calculate the flux in the inner. And similarly, you need to calculate the self-inductance of the inner coil. So here you do not have any choice. You give the current to the same coil whose self-inductance you're calculating. And when you do that, the self-inductance comes out to be mu naught n1 square pi r1 square l. Fine. So this is the mutual inductance, this is the self-inductance. We need to calculate the ratio. So you just divide it, it's so clear. That's going to be N2 upon N1. So option number two would be the correct option for 10th question. Time there to go for question number 11. All right then, now let's go to question number 11, which has been extracted from the topic of PRISM ray optics. Let's see what is the question about. And it says the variation of refractive index of a crown glass. So crown is simply a material. Nothing more to do with that. The variation of refractive index with wavelength has been given. So that's a given part. And from that given part, we need to plot the variation of minimum deviation of the given setup. Apart from this, one thing is given there, that the prism is thin. So moment this word is given that the prism is thin, that means we are having a certain amount of exemption and we can use some oversimplified expression. That's an advantage and that's deliberately given so as to oversimplify the calculation and you can just concentrate on the concept part. So let's see what is the variation of refractive index with respect to wavelength. We know the Cauchy's relation says that with increase in wavelength, mu decreases or n whatsoever we use to represent the refractive index. So this is how the refractive index varies with respect to wavelength. And from this given data, we need to plot the variation of minimum deviation with respect to wavelength like the first option is given there. The second option you could say is given there. The third option is given there and the fourth option is given there. So this is what you need to do. From all those given situation, you need to calculate the variation of minimum deviation with respect to wavelength. All right, so this is the given part. Now, if I see the expression of minimum deviation for a thin prism, well, by the way, you know, when it is thin prism, the deviation comes out to be this equals to mu minus 1 multiplied by A and that would be valid even for minimum deviation because when the prism angle is very small in that case deviation would be same irrespective of the angle of incidence. That's fine now. Or here mu has been you know indicated by n that hardly makes a difference. Now you could see since mu is always greater than 1 so this thing would be positive. So that's a very straightforward pattern now. Whatever is the variation pattern of refractive index, 
the variation pattern of minimum deviation would also be same with a factor of minus one. So that hardly matters and A being the constant. So in this given situation, the correct option would straightforward be option number one. So yes, for this question, question number 11, option number one would be the correct one. Time to move to question number 12. Well, now it's time for question number 12. And that has been put from the topic of simple harmonic motion. The question is something like this. A particle undergoing simple harmonic motion has the time dependent displacement given by this much. So A sine pi t by 90, which now clearly indicates that the particle has started from the mean position because x depends as A sine omega t. And the ratio of kinetic to potential energy of this particle at this given time, we need to calculate. So this one also comes out to be a very straightforward, a formula based question. And it's something like this say, if I need to calculate, I am supposed to calculate the ratio of kinetic energy by potential energy. And here, one thing I can do, the potential energy is one half of k x square which is this whole thing is this. So let me write x square because we know that when a particle has the reference of potential energy at the mean position, then this given expression can be used. And the reference of potential energy is the mean, which is very clearly seen in the figure. And after that, if I want to calculate the kinetic energy, I can do this, that's one half k a square minus half k x square. Well, I also have the option to calculate the velocity and put the expression, but those are all equivalently same thing. So you need to find the value of x at t equals to 210, which is not a big deal. And while doing this, the ratio of kinetic energy to potential energy comes out to be one by three, while unfortunately, none of the given option matches with this given option, which is one by three. So here I'm unable to tick on any given options, but yes, the correct answer would be one by three. Now it's time to go to question number 13. 